Hi, this is Maginoni, and since DC decided to drop a bombshell today, I thought, let's talk about it. This is obviously the Watchmen prequel. Now, on, there, what we have here is two camps, both probably very passionate. On one side is, let's do it. This will be great for comics. This is great storytelling, and, it's, and be a lot of fun. Other camp is like, are you out of your mind? This is the wrong thing to do. Why are you tampering with the greatness? And I guess you can say there's another camp that's silently laughing because this is yet DC's another attempt at DC to piss off Alan Moore, and they're just laughing. Okay, but anyways, what we have let's, let's look at the facts here. There's uh, DC's decided what to do is put out several miniseries. There's going to be four issue miniseries and six issues. Uh, what we have is uh, Rorschach, which is a four-issue run by Brian Azzarella and Lee Bermejo. Minutemen, six issues uh, by Darwin Cook. Uh, Comedian, six issues by Azzarella and uh, J.G. Jones. Dr. Manhattan, another four issues uh, by JMS and Adam Hughes. Uh, Night Owl by JMS and the Kubert uh, Brothers. Uh, no one mispronounce it, but Asmandeus. Uh, six issues by Lee, uh, Len Wen and Jay Lee. Silk, Silk Spectre, four issues, Darwin Cook and Amanda Connor. And Curse of the Crimson Corsar. It's a backup stories by uh, Wayne and Higgins. Now, if they do price this thing at a dollar thirty, I'm sorry, at three ninety nine, we're easily looking at over one hundred and thirty dollars, easily. And it's just, um, you know, it's a lot of change especially in today's environment and you know don't forget also what they're probably going to do is on top of that they're going to come out with the trades they'll come out with the hardcover trades for each one and softcover trades after that so there's more to it than just that now I, t I took some sample sample covers and what we have is Minutemen the Ozzy and Night Owl now what I can say is this uh, this is from my perspective. All taking out emotions aside, this is really a good move for DC in the sense of you you look at 52. 52 generated a lot of interest, a lot of hype. Uh, people were talking about it. Uh, they're on the forums. DC sucks because they're ruining my comic books. And then there's people going, OMG, it's been. 15 years since I've read a DC book and now I can start reading again because it's a fresh start right so you had that going on uh, six months in books are start, you know books are announced to be canceled uh, you have uh, the second wave coming you have mini series that are you know popped up out of nowhere that's part of the relaunch but not part of the relaunch and as expected six months in interest is slowly dropping Especially in the since you start seeing DC falling to number two uh, for the first time in a while, and uh, Marvel's back on top, so I guess you can say the universe has corrected itself. What does DC need to do to spark interest? Obviously, second wave will generate some interest, but not that much. You know, in terms of more hype. So what do they do? They plan on the Watchmen now. Not only will it generate a lot of talk, good and bad, what it's also going to generate is sales. Because you, there are tons of people who were old, you know, were old Watchmen fans, there's new Watchmen fans, um, and they're going to want to know the story of these characters before the uh, trade came out. And then on top of that, they have top creators, you know, the Cooper Brothers, Azarella, or Azarello, I mean, uh, JMS, people like that. Amanda Connor's really popular with DC, and um, it, you know, there's, they put a fourth top tier create, uh, creative teams on these books. So, just in terms of that, it's going to generate even more interest, and um, it's going to generate more sales, to be honest with you. It's going it, to, it's going to be, you know, maybe not I don't expect all of these books to be number one, but Rorschach, that's going to be number one. Comedian will probably be number two. Um, 
Silk Spectre will probably drop a little bit. Night Owl, I can see going up there a little bit. You know, it's it's they're gonna capture the top a good chunk of the top ten. You know, in terms of DC as a whole, so it's a good move for them in that sense. Now, logic aside, I think this is a horrible idea, and the reason why I think is a horrible idea is this. You know, what we have here is this. Um, you have, I guess you can say, a sacred document, and that's the Watchmen. And why would you want to tamper with that? If these books are bad, it's going to tarnish the history of the Watchmen. It's going to, it's going to tarnish it in terms of, you know, when somebody goes to the store and they go, hey, you know, there's this book called The Watchmen. They go, oh, yeah, we got now, instead of going, hey, here's the Holy Grail of the books, it's going to be, yeah, we have The Watchmen, and we have all these preview books that lead up to the storyline, and, you know, the poor customer who doesn't know any better is just going to turn out, turn away and just leave. Because now there's so much extra stuff to get. They don't know what's good, what's bad, what's necessary, and to be honest with you, none of these books are necessary. But the comic stores are going to push it as necessary. Now, I also think what you're looking at is, while some of these people are good creators, I think there are some bombshells just waiting to happen. Two of them off the top of my head are Dr. Manhattan and Night Owl. JMS cannot write a, uh, a property that's not his. You know, he did great on his own, like when he's doing his own stuff, like uh, Midnight Nation, uh, and then the... Um, I think it was called Rising Stars. Those were great. Um, great, fanta fantastic stories. But look what he did to Spider-Man. You know, while I thought there was good parts to Spider-Man, he tanked it to the ground. Now, I understand um, uh, Joe Q had some fault in that, but let's talk about the, the um, Green Goblin and Gwen Stacy storyline. That's all him, you know. Let's look at Superman. That mess that he did. Superman walking the earth nonsense. You know, he can't write. I mean, I, I, I won't say he can't as uh, everything. He has goods, but when it sucks, it sucks. And I have this feeling that Night Owl and Dr. Manhattan are just going to be bad. They're going to be beautiful to look at, but they're going to be bad books. You know, Azarello, he can he can write pretty well. I think that putting him on Rorschach and Comedian are probably good picks, and then those books will probably be standouts as a, as a whole, especially with J.G. Jones. The artwork that with Comedian, it's going to go really well together. Um, the Ozzy Man, I don't know. I think potentially the artwork can work, you know, with the character, but I, you know, who really cares about this guy? You know, he. Do you really want to know about about him, you know, pre? I mean, he's the perfect character as a villain because he just popped out of nowhere type thing. And um, I don't, I don't want what I have envisioned as his personality and everything to be ruined by somebody who comes up and just change, decides to change things along the way. Uh, Silk Spectre, eh. It'll be nice artwork, but I really don't know how well the story is going to be. I'm not anticipating that it. If it's good, it's going to be one of those that's going to be. Um, wow, I didn't really think it was going to be that good, but it really was. But nobody buys this type thing. Minuteman, Minutemen. Uh, I don't know. I know the internet's the internet's basically going nuts over this book. Maybe it's going to be good. Maybe it's not. I don't want to be around to find out. You know, I, I want to I want to buy something else besides this. I'm not going to find out. And I just I don't know. I think that that to me this just reeks of desperation for DC. You know, it's like I don't I know that DC's been wanting to do something with the Watchmen for a long time, and they finally figured out how to do it. They finally have the stories to do it, but to me, it just looks like DC's making a play for money. And it's a shame that they have to go to this, then develop something new. 
you know, I, I looked at it this way. There's two ways you can go about this, you know, with this type of talent. One is you could have used these people on the relaunch. Now, I understand some of these people due to contract obligations couldn't do it. You know, like I'm sure Azarella would have had a hard time doing some of the relaunch stuff when he was doing those mini series, And, you know, I understand things like that. But they could have helped out. Some of these characters could have helped out some of the books that were bad. You know, imagine putting JMS on Blue Beetle, for an example. Well, I hate JMS on, on these types of properties. You know, just the name alone could have boosted up the sales a little bit. But, on the other hand, you could have used these guys in a Vertigo-type setting and say, look, here's some creator content. We're going to create a brand new universe, and that's not necessarily going to be, you know, part of the 52 relaunch universe, but, you know, it's there, and we'll let them have their own playground, and then build up brand new properties with these characters, saying, hey, these are yours, you know, kind of like what Image did, and see what these guys can do. And Marvel's doing that for the most part, too, with their icon line, and DC could have done something with these characters, these these creators and I think that they could have had made something much more lasting than the quick buck now granted you know if they took these characters and said okay look we're gonna make this brand new universe and it's called blah 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 and here are the characters granted there'll be some interest but it would not be nearly as much as this DC uh, Watchmen announcement but I guarantee you, if you if DC gave these care of these creators, you know, like complete creative control, you know, the rights to the characters like Marvel did with Icon, and let them play in their playgrounds, who knows what could have happened to some of these properties five years from now, ten years from now. You know what's going to happen with these books? Nobody's going to care. Once these time, once these miniseries are done, they're not going to care. You know, the only time they're going to care is if DC goes, oh, well, our target number was at, let's say, a million copies, and they sold a million point, one point two five. So let's do another prequel run because we can milk it again. And what we'll do is we'll get different creators on there that are hot at the time. That's how people are going to remember it because their DC is going to keep shoveling it down our faces. And I think that this is just a complete waste of talent doing this, these books. You know, I really, I don't, I don't really, you know, when you have perfection, you don't want to mess with it. And that's what DC is doing with perfection. They're, they're going back and um, tampering with it, hoping to recreate the magic. And you can't recreate it. It's, it's just not going to happen. Some books are going to be strong. Some books are just, I guarantee you, they're going to suck. And I, for one, I'm putting my foot down. Boom. I am not buying any of this nonsense. I, I, I think this is a, like I say, a complete waste of time, a complete waste of resources, where they could have put this money and effort to better use. But I understand why they're doing it, and yeah, it's going to generate interest, it's going to generate numbers, and DC will capture a greater, per, a greater portion of that top ten. But, oh, this is just, this is just bad. I think this is bad. It's just a shame. It's a, it's a, it's a real shame now. You know, because um, they're just like said, it's, and there's just certain things that just shouldn't be done. You know, and I don't see why they needed to do this. It it just to me doesn't. It's like I said to me, it almost looks like they're basically going to Alan Moore saying, uh, Alan, you know, we just keep we want to continually crap all over your properties that you, all the hard work that you did for us. Yeah, you know, we did your, you know, From Hell and then your League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And, yeah, we kind of fucked around with your uh, Watchmen. And we're just going to keep doing it. You know, that's what it almost sounds... Part of me almost thinks that that's what they're doing, even though I know that that's not really what's going on. But it's just a shame. But, anyways, I would like... I've been rambling a little bit too long. So I want to know what you guys feel about the relaunch. Are you for it? Or are you against it? Do you think it's great for the business? Are you buying it? And more importantly, are you buying it? I can tell you right now, I am not buying one of this. Not one of these issues. 
I don't care if somebody comes up to me and throws me the book and and says, Maginoni, Rorschach is the best. You need to read Rorschach. It will change your life. And I will reply, I don't want my life to be changed. I'm pretty happy. I got my one piece and I'm and, and that will do me good. That's what I'm gonna say. Maybe not in those words, but pretty close. Um, so let me know what you guys think, and I'm really curious to know what you guys' opinions are. Because I know there's a few very opinionated people out there, and I want to know what you guys think. So, um, until next time.